Hey everybody, Outside the Box here with our Isolation Lab round four or five or whatever it is. I'm gonna take you outside. We have an apparatus set up here. We're gonna do our illusions with sound, light, and all the properties with science that allow it to happen. Hey everybody, welcome to Isolation Lab round five. Um, this device is pretty cool here. This is a speaker with a hose and the hose is just spilling water and it's attached to the speaker. Sarah's getting the whole apparatus here. It goes up through this tube and then out right I'm playing where the speaker a single is. tone through this speaker right now at 26 hertz. 26 hertz means this speaker vibrates 26 times every second. Sarah's camera is recording this and a recording and video is actually just a series of still images. So Sarah's camera is taking 30 still pictures every single second and putting that together to make it appear as a video. The speaker is moving 26 times every second. And for those of you at home, you should see this water, you should see the sound waves projected into the water, but they probably appear to you as though they're going backwards up into the hose. But to me here, it looks like the water is just spilling out in a mess all over the place. And as you can tell, the water isn't going backwards because I am filling this cup. What we're doing here is we are fooling your brain. We are also fooling the little computer in Sarah's hand that's recording the video. And today, we're going to work with a couple other experiments and a couple other methods of tricking your brain into seeing things moving when they're not. We're going to move on back inside in a second here. All right, guys. Fool our brains. Greetings, everybody. I'm going to grab my lab coat and we are going to get started. All right. Today, we're going to use light and sound and time and technology to trick our brains. On the TV here, which I have hooked up to the microscope, is a picture of some nerve cells in the microscope. These guys here are actually the wiring in your brain. They're the transistors and the computer chips. They're the circuitry, like this piece from a computer, that makes up one of the most powerful computers on the planet. And just like any other computer, there are ways to trick that thing, and we're going to do that today. Now, imagine this. Years ago, before the YouTube and the Internet, before there was Zoom and cable and television, people were really still interested in moving pictures. And at one time, this was the epitome of moving picture technology. Are we in the frame there? Yeah, we'll see if it works. Give it a go. Uh, maybe angle it down a little bit. It's hard to see through this because you're going to have to line up the, the slots just right. Yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah. That's good. There we go. This was hours and hours and hours of fine, fine entertainment for people back in the day. This was a hit before your mother was born, though she may have been born a long, long time ago. Ask her. She should know. Anyhow, we are going to make one of those today. A zoetrope. And this thing is pretty interesting because it's very open-ended. Once you make the frame for it, you can reuse it. You can do your own animation. You can find animation starters on the internet. I'm going to show you how to do that. There are all kinds of ways you can use this doodad or this device to make your own moving pictures at home. And then when you combine a mobile phone or another video camera, digital video camera, you can get all kinds of crazy effects out of this thing that you wouldn't see with your naked eye, just like we did with that water outside. We're going to revisit that at the end, too, and we're going to explain exactly what's happening there. Before we get kicking here, I do want to let everybody know that we are still 
in the midst of our Rube Goldberg challenge. And you can find more information about that at outsidetheboxlabs.com slash home dash science dash kits. Also, everybody that has one of the DIY side kits, they've all been shipped out aside for a few that came in this week as of today. So if you didn't get them today, you should get them tomorrow or the next day. Nothing in this will require any of that stuff, but next week we're going to start hitting those pretty hard. Also, I want to show everybody the results of our crystals from last week real quick. These are my copper sulfate crystals. These guys came out nice and big. And towards the end, I started growing some electro crystals with the battery, the copper. This is what I got. I actually disconnected it about 10 minutes after... Our live feed ended so got some interesting metal crystals some interesting metal salt crystals i saw some pictures of crystals that some of you at home made and they were really really cool hope you are still experimenting with that well, let's get back to our zoetrope the idea with the zoetrope is your brain works kind of like sarah's camera here or like my computer or any other digital camera your brain can only see a certain number of still images per second and it stitches those together to give you kind of the illusion of motion. So if we can make some still pictures move fast enough, we can trick our brain into thinking they're moving. Um, now, since we're all individual, we're all different, we all kind of see at a different, what they call frame rate or number of still pictures per second. Some people are around 35, some people go up into the 60s, some people up into the 90s. So there's a lot of variation with that. If we put in our materials list, you would need a coffee can, a piece of cardboard, or the lid from a coffee can. And that's going to be step number one for this thing. And I want to show everybody how we're going to make the base for this. And like I said, once you make the base, you can pretty much reuse it over and over and over and over again. And you can get many, many hours of fun out of this doodad. Um, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a little piece of string. And this is for everybody that doesn't have the coffee can or the coffee can lid. So if you have the can or you have the lid, you don't have to worry about this first step. If you don't, we're going to show you how to make the base in a perfect circle. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie the world's simplest, probably loosest knot ever in a piece of string. Mm, that ought to do. Doesn't have to be super tight. Doesn't have to be a nice knot. And I'm going to stick a bamboo skewer through that knot and tighten it down. If you have a push pin, use that. You can stick it in there. We'll use the push pin again later if you have it. If you don't, skewer, stick, pencil, whatever. Anything here works. Now, if you're using a pencil, you will also need another pencil because we're going to use this string and this uh, bamboo skewer to kind of make a bootleg compass so that we can make a perfect circle. The next step here, I'm going to tie... A little knot around my pen. That ought to be good. Don't tie your string too long or you're going to end up with a massive circle. But if you do end up with a massive circle, well, that's cool. You will end up with a massive zoetrope. It just means you're going to have to draw more still frames. Now I'm going to stab my skewer in here. I'm going to kind of shorten up my string, engage my pen, and check this out. If I hold the skewer still, Spin the pen a couple times around. My knot's still getting tight, which is why my circle doesn't look perfect here. Or you could cheat if you have a compass. If you have an actual compass, you have a compass or you can trace around. something that's round. I just want to show everybody how you can make a circle using a couple simple things. Another idea here, take your coffee can. Now what's nice about this is I know where the center of my circle is. So if you're doing it this way, go ahead and just cut your circle out along the line that you made. Now again, I have a couple false lines on there because my knots were still pulling themselves tight. Um, and again, if you're using the lid or the entire coffee can or oatmeal box, you can skip this step. Now we've got our nearly perfectly round thing. Now this is where people that are using the coffee can lid are going to jump in and also coffee can people. We're going to make what's going to end up being the images that go on the inside of our moving picture. Now for me, I'm just using plain printer paper. That'll work for you as well. Um, any kind of paper should do. And we want that to wrap around. Right now we're kind of just measuring this. So I'm going to put a little piece of tape on one corner of my paper, and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it around the bottom 
of my cardboard just to figure out how far around this thing goes. So I've rolled it around right there. And it is very clear I'm going to need a second piece of paper. So I'm going to tape this in place just so that I can measure how much more paper I need. All right. And so far I just have half of this thing covered. Instead of getting an entirely new sheet of paper, I'm going to cut this one in half. And we're going to pick up about where we left off there. Now I'm going to tape these together to make a long strip of paper. And you want to put your tape on the outside. That's definitely key because you don't want to see that on the inside. The inside is where your movie is going to be projected. So let's resume our rolling right here. And this is going to be a little messy. It's going to take both of your hands. This thing's going to fall off. Don't worry. We're just getting a rough idea of how big we want our paper to be right now, how much paper we're going to need. That's yeah, unrolling. There we go. So once I have this rolled up like that, I'm going to kind of pinch it right there. And we're going to tape our strip together. Actually, no, I'm not going to tape it right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mark with my pen where the two meet. I'm going to make two marks, actually. I'm going to make a mark at the top on the inside, right here. And I'm going to make a mark up here on the outside. We're going to line those up again in just a second. And then we're just going to let the whole thing unroll. Now, while those of you using the coffee can lid or the cardboard method are getting those steps out of the way, I'm going to show people using the whole coffee can what we're going to do. And this one here, probably want an adult to help you, but we need to remove this top of the coffee can and kind of cut it down. So I'm just going to kind of drill into the cardboard there with my scissors. And once I have my scissors stuck in there, I'm going to go ahead and cut this coffee can down a little bit shorter. We're trying to think of other things that are around that we might have. Well, oatmeal containers. Oatmeal containers and anybody the likes uh, matzo, matzo meal. I mean, that might be a little bit of a Oh, does that come in around? Yeah, to, oh. it does. I, I use it, so if anybody's uh, into matzo, you, you can use that container. So, coffee can, oatmeal container, matzo meal people. You're already three steps ahead here once you get your can cut down. Notice how wide I cut this. It's about the width of my hand. It's going to be important. You don't want it to be too short. People that are using just plain paper, you've got your strip of paper. You have it marked out right now. Coffee can people are going to need to kind of do the same thing here, but on the inside of your coffee can. So you're going to put a piece of paper in there up against the rim. You're going to mark on the inside or the outside, outside's probably easiest, about how high that coffee can is. You're also going to need to get, in my case at least, a second sheet of paper, put it in there. Two sheets of paper now. Now I'm going to tape my two sheets of paper again because I'm kind of measuring the length and if you only want to tape as little as possible here, you can do that by Lining up your ends close, but not perfect. So, I know this is about the equivalent of my circumference in there. I'm just going to get that nice and taped up. And now, coffee can people, you don't need the width of paper that people that are using the cardboard base do. So coffee can people, you can go ahead and cut like two inches of this. So you have one strip that's about two inches wide. And this is going to be where you're going to put the frames for your moving picture. Now we're going to go back while well, coffee can people get their movie frame film strip set up. Go back to cardboard or coffee can lid people. Hopefully you've got your strip set up here. I'm going to put another piece of tape on mine just because it's a little flimsy. I missed a spot there. So 
So for you, this is going to be your film reel, so to speak. And this is going to be where you need to do your animation. Now, the more frames that you draw or glue in here, the smoother your animation is going to appear. Now, just in the interest of time here, I'm going to draw some really simple pictures. But I would like to show you something. If you want to be really precise about this, you can fold your paper completely in half, then fold it in half again, and then fold it in half again if you want. And these will give you sort of little windows when you unfold it to show where you need to do your animating so they're evenly spaced. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. Now, I'm gonna do a really simple animation. I'm gonna draw some stick figures. And this is something you're probably gonna wanna revisit later on. And I'm gonna make my stick figure move a little bit in each frame. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just drawing a guy that's kind of doing some kind of weird cartwheel looking thing. I'm trying to keep my figure about the same size at least. And I might be failing to do that. We'll find out in a minute. His leg should be straight now. His body's down there. Like I said, this is something that you can go back and experiment with over and over and over again. Test one and find out, ah, it's not quite how I wanted it to look. Now, mine is going to end with the guy upside down because I'm kind of rushing here. But if you had time, you could make it so that it ends with him standing right back upright and it would look like a continuous loop. It's the oldest GIF ever. Now, for your people using the coffee can strip, you're going to go ahead and do the same thing. You've got yours lined up so that it fits inside your coffee can. Do the same folding to mark out your frames, and you can go ahead and draw your individual frames inside there. Now, we're not quite done yet, but while you're, if you are working on your frames right now, I want to show you somewhere that you can go to get some really good, really helpful ideas. I'm going to move over to the TV here for this one. And I'm just going on good old Google here, and check out what happens if you search horse walking sequence, and then go to images. You get all these images that are already drawn out for you of a horse walking, for example, or a horse running in this case, step by step by step. Now you can use those as a guide or you can just print some of these out and cut the individual pieces out and glue them or tape them to those little fold frames you made. And you can also do that for other animals. Here's a buffalo or a bison. We've got actual photographs of the walking of a bison or a buffalo. You can do a rhinoceros right here, which is pretty cool. So there are all these really cool animation starters available on the internet for you already. So if you don't feel like taking the time here to draw you know, a thousand little stick figures going like this, you can always just skip that step and print this stuff out. And if they get really motivated, there's a guy you can look up on YouTube that does three-dimensional versions of these. They're insane. Oh, yeah, that is... I might bring that up before yeah, we're done Yeah, gives here. out a look. It's crazy what he does. So, if you are using the coffee can lid or the cardboard, you're going to go ahead and reattach your film to your base. And the easiest way to do that is to just kind of go ahead and... I'm going to put couple pieces of tape sticky side up coming from the bottom of this thing sticky side up and sticky side up and again you can always go back later and tighten this up 
And once you've built this, you can change the frame. You don't have, or the film frame, you don't have to go over this or cut it out. You can just insert another one. I'm gonna show you how that works in a minute. So again, you can use the same device if you're happy with how it turns out over and over and over again. The hard part is building the base and the strip. And then I'm just gonna take this, I've taped it to my cardboard circle. I'm gonna go over and as I roll the circle, I'm going to pull my tape up, tape up, and tape up, and then I'm just going to kind of seal that with another piece of tape just to make it nice and tight. Now, coffee can people, we're coming back to you, and we're all just about at the same step now. You should have this sort of cylinder if you've done the cardboard or the lid method. Coffee can people, you're gonna take your film strip and you're gonna put it down inside your can. You don't have to do anything else. Make sure it's up against the walls. If you want to, take one piece of tape and put it right around the joint where the two loose ends meet. You kinda of try to get it stuck to the wall just a little bit. Now we both both groups here are dealing with about the same thing. This is probably the most important step. Now what you're gonna do, and this is why I told you to leave plenty of paper above here. This is why I told my coffee can group, don't cut the whole can down. See how much can I have above the film strip? See how much paper I have above my images? In the middle of every frame, or just above the center of every little picture you drew, Take a pair of scissors, and you're going to cut a small slit, and remove that paper. Coffee can people, same thing. Right above every image that you made, take your scissors, snip down, make a little slit. You can either fold it out of the way, or you can cut it off entirely. And you're going to go all the way around this thing, cutting. Slits that are roughly the same size and about the same depth. I'm going to move on to the next step. I know you're still cutting. Maybe take a break from cutting if you're following along live here and check out the next step. If you've used the lid or if you've used the cardboard method, the center should be very, very clear to you because I'm mean, you stab this push pin or this skewer in there to make your circle so you know that's the middle. Coffee can people. You're going to kind of have to eye your center up, and you're going to take either, I have this nice wooden dowel, but you may not have that. If you have a pencil with a rubber eraser, that'll work. If you have a bamboo skewer, that will work. You're going to take some kind of stick and either a bunch of tape if you have it. I'm going to use a hot glue gun because it sets nice and easily, and you're going to get your stick covered in glue. And you know where your center is. I'm spinning mine to see about where the center is. You're going to set your stick in there and let it dry. Now, if you have a pencil with an eraser and you don't want to ruin that pencil, what you can do is you can take a thumbtack and put it from inside down and stick it up into the eraser of your pencil. So if that makes sense, take the eraser, push the thumbtack up this way. I'm going to use the skewer to simulate a thumbtack. And stab it on like that. This is going to be how we turn our zoetrope when it's all done. So you're going to have to take a little time here, let your glue dry. Actually, my glue is just about dry. Now I realize I didn't put my animation in this one. Uh, actually, I kind of want to see how this animation turns out. So I might glue this on. Again, I did a pretty lousy animation, but I am curious to see if we can detect motion in it. So while I glue this on, I'm going to show you a method that I like to use to drive my zoetrope. And this is something you should also do with supervision with a parent, a guardian, a big brother, a big sister around. I'm gonna grab my horse animations that I, again, downloaded from the good old internet and come around here and show you. So, I'm gonna take my stick, I'm gonna place it into the chuck on the drill. This is where you normally put a bit. 
And I'm going to tighten that down by spinning the chuck. And now I have a Zoetrope driver, which is kind of cool. So can you see them, Sarah? Oh, I like give it a go. Okay. I might be in reverse right now. Let's see what it looks like going the other way. Maybe tilt it a little bit. It's going way too fast. So, and that's, it looks good to me, but because Sarah's filming on a camera with a different frame rate, it looks different to yeah, her. Yeah, take a look. Well, it's also the angle. But yeah, you got to find the... the there we down. go. And now you should be able to see the horses running. Now, the faster I go, see, now they look like they're going backwards. That's crazy. Now they look like they're jumping over each other. And this is kind of cool. This effect that we're seeing right here is exactly the same effect that we saw with the water outside. And we're going to get to the bottom of that right now. So while you're letting your glue dry or while you're letting your doing your animations and getting your zoetrope ready, let's go back to what we saw outside and why did we see that. It looked like that water was getting sucked back up into the hose. But you clearly saw me take this cup and fill it up with water. And that is because of a thing called wave interference or sometimes wave cancellation. This camera is taking 30 pictures per second and I was bouncing that water at 26 times a second. If I had bounced that water at 30 times a second and that camera took a picture 30 times a second, the water would look frozen in space. We're gonna do a little demonstration right now to show you but before I get this one started, I want you all to use your imagination here. Let's pretend we have a clock that only has a second hand, like a stopwatch. And let's say we're taking a video with a camera that only films, let's say, one picture every 60 seconds. So we start with our second hand at the top. And it takes to 60 seconds. And then our camera takes one still picture. And then it takes 60 seconds and our camera goes one still picture. And if that continues to happen, one frame every minute, and you go back and look at the movie, all you're going to see is the hand standing still at the top. Now let's say we adjust our camera so instead of taking a picture every 60 seconds, it takes a picture every 59 seconds. Now our clock looks like this. First picture, our clock goes tick, tick, tick to at 59 seconds. Now tick, 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 59 more seconds. If you go back and look at that video, you're going to see the hand of the clock here, 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 here. But in reality, the hand went all the way around, but the camera didn't catch it. That's what made that water look like it was going backwards. It was an interference between the number of pictures the camera was taking every second and the number of waves that were being played out of the speaker every second. Now, we are going to recreate that right here, and you can probably do this same thing at home if you want. If you have downloaded the frequency generator app that we put in the materials list. And the app should look like this. It'll give you a little plus button and a little minus button. And that's how you change the frequency. Now most digital cameras and most most digital cameras and most phones film at 30 frames per second or 30 hertz. So if you open your app and you set your hertz to 30, might have to turn the volume up here a little bit, you're playing the sound wave, oh and it's a very very low wave, that's why it is, it's a very low frequency wave. I have to tell it I want to hear it loud. Got it. So it'd be really hard to hear. I'm going to set this cup of coffee on top of the speaker and I'm going to shine some light on it and it's actually, you see the waves in it, Sarah? Needs a minute. Maybe I can see him from where it, I yeah. am. Mm, I was going to say maybe try a different... You try a different angle. Come over where I am. I can see him great from right here. It's all about the lighting. Back. Yeah. 
back, right there. You can see the waves in the coffee. You see the vibrations from the sound wave and they're standing almost completely still. Now to me, I can see them moving all over the place, but because this camera is taking 30 pictures a second and this wave is vibrating 30 times a second, it's only catching the wave when it peaks. Watch what happens if I make the frequency go down to 26. You should start to see the waves move real slow on film. And they should look like they're going from the middle or the, the outside in. Now watch if I go above 30. You should see about the same thing happen, but the opposite. The waves should look like they're going from the middle out, but really slow. That's the same thing that was happening outside with the water wave machine. And again, you don't detect this with your eyes. I'm looking at my coffee cup right now and it's sloshing all over the place. But through the film on the camera, it looks completely different. And this is another little trick of the mind using technology, using time, and using waves. Now, if anyone's interested in building that device that we had outside, it's actually really simple. All you need is that app, an old speaker, and a water hose. Very simple. And you just tape the speaker to the hose and let the hose flop around when the speaker moves. Now, for those of you that are still working on these guys, we would love to see what you end up coming up with. I said if you've made the basic parts here, you can use it over and over again. All you have to do is put a new film reel in. So I just drew that silly stick figure. I can put a new film reel in here. I can mark where my notches are, take it back out, draw some pictures, or I can take some of the ones that we downloaded from online if I want really nice perfect ones and I can glue them in there and we can make a completely different movie. We would love to see if anybody out there comes up with some really crazy home movies of their own ancient style. So if you do, go on the Facebook or put something in the comments down below or send us an email. We'd really like to see your videos that you've taken of your homemade zoetropes or flip books or whatever you end up coming up with. Let's, uh, let's see who can make the, uh, I think the funniest would be a good category, Sarah. Funniest home movies made using the do-it-yourself zoetrope ancient homemade movie technology. And if anybody gets to messing around with the sound frequency thing, we'd also like to see how that works for you. I will give you one hint. Lighting is key. I literally spent a month and a half trying to make that thing work. It really the, is all about the lighting. The Even the hose problem. trick outside is yeah. all about the light. And if you're out there long enough messing with it in the natural light of day and the light changes just because it took you half an hour to set it up, you wonder why it's not working. you got to move it around and mess with the light. I could show you almost a month and a half <laughs> worth of videos that I took messing with that thing in my basement in the dark. And couldn't figure out why it didn't work. And then as soon as the weather turned warm, I was uh, able to go outside with it. And it worked every single time, like right away. Uh, here we go. Video of water waves. Video of water waves, video of water waves, video of water waves. Ah, I was losing my mind. Basically it went on for waves. months. <laughs> I changed the color of the background. Uh, I changed the size of the speaker and the color of the background. It really, I changed the angle that I filmed it from. It's All been it was a, it's was been the a lighting. journey. Let's so, just say the least. <laughs> do that one outside, and you won't spill water all over mom and dad's floor. It has been a pleasure being with you again this week. Next week, Sarah and I were talking about maybe doing some uh, turning electricity into magnetism and magnetism into motion and motion into electricity. So I think next week we're going to make electromagnets, electric motors, and small electric generators. I think that's what's on tap. Your kits should be here really soon. If you're one of the people waiting for kits, they are in the mail. Like I said, just about all of them, except for the few that came in the last couple days, should be on their way. And those will come in very, very handy next week. Next week, they'll be very, Especially. very, very handy. We'll try and get materials list up early this week because some of the stuff that you need for motors, electromagnets is, I don't want to say hard to find, but you're going to, you'll have it around the house, but it might take you a little bit to get yourself to it. And you'll see why in a little bit. I hope everyone's staying safe. I hope everyone is staying sane. And I hope everyone is keeping their brains working, doing some science out there at your house. Keep on experimenting, everybody. Till next week. Bye, guys.